Here we go. We are live. Welcome back to the Let's Do Video live stream. It is Friday. Has it really been two weeks? I always say that, but <laughs> it seems like we were just here <laughs> chatting, which is a good and bad thing. Um, it and does. it's almost yeah. Enterprise Connect. Ugh. Yeah, I think we said it feels like the um, feels like the Earth goes around the sun a little bit quicker in March, doesn't it? There's so much. Uh, it just seems to be compressed. I'm I'm only halfway through my list of follow ups from last year's Enterprise Connect. All these wonderful companies that 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 you know. Well, we'd love to work with you. Let's do some videos and do some. And they need to follow up. And it's a couple months later, and now it's Enterprise Connect again. I, I guess I, I'm I'm sorry to those I didn't follow up with. I'll see you at the show, and maybe we could do something this year. <laughs> Well, just goes yeah, too fast. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It's, it I think it's going to be bigger and better. It's um, it's certainly uh, by by looking at the the number of people exhibiting and 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 some of the attendees, it figures um, it, it's going to be huge again this year. So yeah, yeah last really year was our, our first year back, and it was it was a mixed. You know, everyone it, everyone was positive because everyone was so happy to be back and see each other. I, you know, it was it was my first event back, so I was really happy to, you know having coffee with people and seeing people and, and everyone was super positive. But, but the, at the end of the day, they said it was a success in that the, the vendors returned, the analysts returned, the press returned, but it was a little light on end users. And that's really important. So, so we're hoping that this year it'll be a full return. Everyone, including the end users, will come back. And I think they will because they saw last year that we're back for real. They, they, they saw the videos. They, they saw the press releases. They know the show is back. So uh, hopefully this year will be the full the full experience again. I'm excited. I'm pretty sure it will be. Yeah. yeah. And well, I get to see you in person. Today, David. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That'd be great. Yeah. What have you got on our plates for us today? What, I what would like to, uh, a little bit of self-promotion, but, but I think it leads to an interesting topic. I just put out a video. I evaluate it and I don't have it here to show you because I already boxed it up to send back. Oh, actually I do have it to show you. Hold on. Um, drop our little screen here. There we go. That's, that's a shot from, from my unboxing. My favorite part is when you pull the little, plastic thing off it's just very satisfying so satisfying yeah Isn't that great? <laughs> and and here's a, a better better shot of it um but you get from the from the size of my hand you get the size of this it's not the size of a big old speaker bar but it's a, a bit beefier than than a, it's not a webcam it is a meeting room system and sorry um, this is the bose what what's the model they David? have they have just two so... video bars this is the vbs in my okay. mind, S stands for small because the, the other one is, is way longer. It's a, it's a, the other one looks like a real, you know, home speaker bar, a big thing uh, for bigger meeting mm -hmm. rooms. And this one is, well, again, let me, let me bring up my, my hand. Yeah, you can see it's, it's um, not as wide as uh, the Poly P15, but not as, as, as narrow as, as a Brio. It's somewhere in between. Obviously designed okay. so for meeting case... rooms up to about 10 uh -huh. by 10 feet, 3 by 3 meters. Got you. So it's more sort of huddle room than a personal device that you would put in a home office. Would that probably be the use case? Yes. Yes. And, and in the eval, and I'll put a link to the eval um, in, the, in, the, in the chat. One of the first things I do is I, I make a disclaimer. I say, this isn't a proper demo of the way it's supposed to be used. This is a, a testing environment because I have it in my home office and it's just a little weird in a home office. It's not meant for that. Um, you know, one of the problems in, in a home office is we mount our webcams above the monitor so we get better eye contact. Um, this doesn't have a monitor mount. I had to put it under my monitor. So it was a little bit of a less flattering. It was, it was this view, which I don't think is quite as attractive for me. Um, but, but again, <laughs> it's meant to be in a meeting room where it would be hung under the monitor or wall mounted under the monitor where it would be at an eye contact height. So you wouldn't have the view of me you have in this, in this video. Um, Got you. So definitely for, for meeting rooms and uh, it's like, I mean, I've been saying for a while, this is, this is what the industry is looking for. This is what the, the market is looking for. We have a million rooms that we now have to add, outfit for video because half the people are coming back to the office and half the people are staying home and we have to communicate. And we don't want to start messing around with, okay, so I got to buy speakers and I got to buy a microphone and I got to buy a, a webcam and I got to buy all these different parts and make sure they work together. Give me one unit that does audio in, audio out, video, and let me connect it to my, my PC running Zoom rooms, Microsoft Team rooms. So, so the form factor, this is, and their competitor, you know, everyone putting out these devices, I think is doing well with them. I think this is, this is what the market is, is looking for. Um, I, you have to see the unboxing, but I, I should have showed more pictures. It is so simple. Like I, I used to, a room kit, not talking 20 years ago, talking pre-pandemic three years ago, a room kit took me 20 minutes to put together. I had the speaker, which connected to the, to the, to the uh, Nook, the little Intel Nook which connected to the monitor, which connected to the things. And, and it was a procedure. This was USB power. I'm looking at myself. 
it just plug and play very easy so this this would be an easy setup for an it department facilities well competent end users without a lot of remodeling of the office which sounds ideal that's exactly what we want exactly. it sounds almost as simple as plugging a sound bar to your tv it, it pretty much is and this is this is what i'm looking for because you know if you're talking about the the ceo's you know boardroom Okay, I want some special stuff there. I don't want it to be easy. I want it to be complicated. I want to, uh, you know, it's for showing off. I want it to be, um, it's okay if there's a lot of parts in the box. This, I'm thinking, I'm not thinking I'm going to install one. I'm thinking I'm going to have to install, if I'm a small business, you know, medium business, 30 of these. If I'm a big business, I might install a thousand of these. So when I open that very first box, if I only see a USB cable and a power cable and a wall mount, I'm happy because everything I see, I'm multiplying by however many rooms I have. So I think, I think your team can get this plugged in, you know, installed uh, very easily, very quickly at scale, which is so what, what did you like about, about it? What, 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 the, what were the considerations? What did you like best about it? Um, it's, it's funny. I think it's, it's power. It's, it's the most, the most notable thing about it might not be the most important thing about it. That, that's a fair way to say, it. I don't want to say they're doing something that's not important, but it's a bow speaker. And Bose speakers are good. Uh, you know, we have some other big, uh, you know, home audio companies like Jabra, companies that we know. We wear their headphones. We know it sounds good. We have their speakers. Bose is one of those companies. We know they do good. And for a meeting room speaker, usually they're not good because they don't really have to be. Uh, they need to handle voice. They don't, there's not that much power needed in, in, in an audio system to handle voice because it's intermittent. I talk, I stop, I talk, and I stop. If you try to play music through a typical meeting room system, it crackles, breaks out, it pops. There's not enough muscle behind it. This, this has muscle. Um, I was playing, uh, you know, Ozzy Osbourne through it, and it was sounding like Ozzy Osbourne. And then I turned it up, and it was way, you know, my wife is like, what are you doing in there? It was way too loud. It was way too loud. And, and you may think, well, you know, why am I excited about that? Because there are uses for it. Marketing teams are going to demo their new video, which has music in it. You know, that you, you do need music when you're collaborating with a team. You do need powerful video. And this has... And I'll tell you what, one, one thing as well is meeting rooms can be noisy, noisy environments. And I was on a call the other day, um, the noise reduction of my UCAS service, we use Teams. I had a tree surgeon and a leaf blower outside my house, probably about 12 feet away. Noise reduction cut it out completely. So noise reduction in a noisy meeting room environment is great. Yeah. for the distant end but if you're in the meeting room and you're struggling to hear you need decent Good game there to be able to listen to everyone don't you yeah absolutely yeah. yeah and this this has it in in space it is like it was it was cranking it out it was really good but that leads to another uh thing which which is uh, the microphone and i i almost feel bad because it does it does what you just said it does what we wanted to do it has a noise reduction it actually has more than the noise reduction you can configure and the eval video should be five to 10 minutes. This one's 22 minutes. I'm really sorry, but I just really wanted to go over. I really wanted to go over the, the software. I spent four minutes on the hardware. And let me just get that out of the way because that's what was really important. And that's what I think people who are wanting to, who are interested in this need to know. Um, audio and video are excellent. You plug it in, connect it to Zoom. You're going to look great and you're going to sound great. And that's all you really need to know. But then I spent another 18 minutes <laughs> um, talking about the, the software that comes with this thing. And one of the cool things in the software was it has this beam forming microphone thing. So you look at an image of yourself in the software, you see a purple beam and a red beam and a blue beam, and you can move them around to point them. And if you're in the beam, you get heard. And if you're not in the beam, and there's a gray beam you could put that'll block out the area. I put the gray beam over half the room. And when I walked into that half, I would get, get muted. And, and wow. I... I I'm not going to demo that because it's, it's funny. I was, last time I was at an analyst event, um, the analysts were like, well, they stop showing us <laughs> the noise canceling demo. We're so tired of seeing people hold up a hairdryer and say, you can't hear the hairdryer. Yes, we know it works. What's one of those? Yeah. What's, what's a hairdryer? I'm not familiar with that. <laughs> Actually, I'm, still, I'm still wet. But, yeah. but you know, it, it, it does, the noise canceling does work and it is very important. And, and yeah, not just, you know, for home, it's obviously important. We pets, we have lawnmowers, but in the office, you have a lot of meetings with glass walls and people walking around. So I, I don't want to talk too much about the noise canceling because at this point we expect it. We've seen it. It's been working for years. And especially with Bose, uh, you know, audio, I expect, expect in and out to have the highest, you know, all the bells and whistles. 
Uh, but if you do check out the video and you check out the part where I'm going through the, um, the settings for the microphone, it is really cool. Those beam things are, are really cool. It sounds like they've really sort of thought about the whole install experience, making it easy. Uh, that sounds really interesting. One thing I would love to know is wh who's it certified for or with? Is that, yeah, who, who, who can you use it with? I want to I have a whole discussion about certification, but one more thing on the design before we go yeah. into that. And, and the short answer is, I think they're currently, and I'm not 100% on this, but I checked their website, currently Teams, Microsoft Teams certified and working on the others. If, okay. Um, but one thing about the, the design, which I think is a pro and the con, is I'm assuming that there's a Bose design Bible somewhere that they have to follow. And if you look at this, look how sleek and clean this thing is. There's no buttons. There's no buttons. Sometimes there's not a lot of buttons, which I like. I don't want a lot of buttons because it's confusing, but there's... No buttons. There's actually one button. I don't know if my, my, my hand will disappear, but it's um, under. Can't even see it. It's under. It's a switch to, to, um, uh, to close the shutter because we like a physical shutter. We like seeing a little piece of plastic come across. We know we're not being watched. They had to put that on, but no one's going to find that switch. You can't find it. I, I, I was like, look, I'm like, oh, it has a shutter switch. And the reason is, look how gorgeous this thing looks with no buttons on it. But that leads to problems because, and I go, at length in this in the, in the in the in the video, but they have to have remote control with it because if someone accidentally turns off the volume, well, you walk over and you press the button, you turn on the volume. There's no volume button on it, <laughs> no volume button, so it needs a remote control. I don't like remote controls, so that's a design trade-off. Do you look gorgeous and not have the functionality of having your buttons on your device, or do you put some buttons on it and then it doesn't look like a Bose device? I don't know the right answer, but it's a, it's a trade-off. Yeah. So so good points. So um, let's get into. I'm I'm excited about this uh, certification discussion. Um, I have many mixed thoughts about the whole certification thing. Uh, when the first time I saw that, I'm like, oh, marketing. I mean, it makes sense. Like when when I do um, a white paper for for Microsoft or I do a, a a case study for Zoom, I put their logo all over it. I'm partnered with them. I want to show them that we're partnered. I want to you know show that we you know, that this is something we're doing together. And these devices, um, I don't want to make up a number, but I'm going to make up a number. 90 plus percent of the time, they're going to be used for Zooms and Teams. I mean, if I, was, if I was Bose and I was looking to sell this device, I would want Zoom and Teams plastered all over it because people who are looking, Susan, the IT manager for a big corporation, she's not going to Google and looking for meeting room camera. She's going to Google and looking for a Zoom meeting room camera if she's a Zoom company or she's looking for a team. So that's what they're looking for. That's what they want. From the vendor point, I understand wanting to have that logo on there. Um, but after talking to the vendors and talking to Microsoft and Zoom and, and Cisco, it's not just a marketing. They, get, they get a book of things they have to do to this device to get that certification. I have mixed feelings about yeah, that. Some of those, you... I, yeah, some of those are things like physical Teams buttons. or And, and also you have to go through certification. Um, so you have to sign up to a lab to get it certified mm. to make sure it's a certain quality. The bigger devices, the room-based systems. But I've always wondered, does it really make sense for personal devices if you're working from home? So I'm sure that you've got a, a multitude of webcams, some of which you've uh, are probably gathering dust because they're not as good as others. Uh, we we I've got a Rode mic here, for example. I've got Cambridge Audio earbuds. I've got Google Pixel buds. I've got poly headsets, Cisco headsets, Logitech devices. Um, and we all know what works for us. I mean, I, I don't want to have a big set of cans on my head when I'm, you know, on video. But I'm not sure I need a certified device. Um, just because I'm going to press a mute button on a headset and it's going to show that I'm muted in software, I can get around that. I just use the head I, I just use the hardware or I use the soft phone I, I uh, sorry the soft client to mute I don't need to mute in different places or click in different places so it's an interesting one isn't it what what are your thoughts about personal devices and certification I mean it's, it's really tough when we get to systems. personal um yeah well, USB works do we need it for room I, I, I want to go back to that because we're assuming that but I, I want to go back to that but first for personal um have you ever had a problem with a USB device and it didn't work? And you say, oh, well, of course, this isn't certified for Zoom. No wonder it didn't work. I'm using Zoom. This isn't, oh, USB headsets work. I mean, okay, if you, if, you buy a, if you buy a $2 headset off of someone on the street, it might not work. But for the most part, 
even the cheap $15 headset, USB headsets, they don't sound as good as the $100 headsets, but they work. They, and, and the webcams, they, every, everything USB. In my mind, if I see a USB plug, that's certification. <laughs> I know it's going to work. Yes. Um, but yeah. maybe to understand if we need it for personal, let's go back to the meeting rooms. Why do I need it for the meeting rooms? The button, let, the button is its own discussion. Let's, let's set aside the button because I have mixed feelings about the button. But let's say this device is certified by Microsoft. And to do so, they had mm -hmm. to do a bunch of things in the software which I don't even understand. What are those things and how do they make it a better room device? As I'm, I'm, let's say I'm a Microsoft Teams company. I'm going to put these in 30 of my rooms. Oh, it says Microsoft Teams certification. Now I feel good. Why? Well, part of it, I guess, is that some of it can be monitored, uh, monitored, managed and monitored. I've invented a new word there. Management. Monitored, uh, ma management and monitored Point. by IT. So you can see that there's some, I mean, Cisco, Zoom, Microsoft, all of these vendors, they can do some amazing stuff in conjunction with the hardware vendors, things like counting the number of people using AI to see if, you know, the rooms utilized, checking to see if the HDMI cable has been unplugged, making sure that it's the power's on. There's some stuff there that can be of value to the IT organization for sure. Even, even things like pushing firmware or checking firmware, that sort of thing is, is quite handy, I think, for some of those room-based systems. And that's part of certification? Um, I believe so. Yeah, I think so. I think it's got to be, you know, uh, but saying that you've got poly or poly HP, I think is it HP poly or poly HP. A number sure, of these it? vendors all have their own management interfaces and um, ways of, uh, of pushing that software, regardless of whether or not you're connected to a UCAS service or, or a conferencing service. I didn't so evaluate it, but Bose has, a, uh, Bose has an app for, for IT managers that can connect to, if you have a hundred of these, it can manage a hundred of them from one place. So yeah, a lot of these vendors have their own management apps. Um, so maybe part of it is, is trying to pull through an ecosystem and adding value to an ecosystem under, under, you know, these shared brand names. Um, I, I don't know. That's one of the questions I'm going to take away with me at Enterprise Connect and, and ask my colleague, uh, Prachi Nemo, who looks at hmm. devices it, it, as part of her analyst role. Um, why is management so important for room-based systems? And what am I missing? I, it's So oh. I can see some of the arguments with room-based systems, but personal is an interesting one, isn't it? But for room-based systems management, I, from evaluating this, and if, if you watch the eval, you see why it's a big deal. There is there was a, a problem I had with the Bose. You know, I've been saying nice things about it because the, what's important is the video and audio quality, and I was very impressed with that. But I really did get a, more critical than I usually get. I, I kind of... I was kind of a little, I want to say mean, but I was, I was direct with Bose. There were some things in, in their, um, in their uh, not the management app, because I didn't have that, but the, the app that comes with this, just the, the con configuration app for this. Um, the workflow was a little convoluted. When I, when I tried to change some settings, it made me reboot the device. And, and I'm thinking, wow, if I had to set up 30 rooms and I had to reboot the device every time I'm changing a setting on one of them, that would take a long time. So I'm glad they have the, the management app that, that you were just talking about, the centralized, the IT sitting in her you know, office, seeing all 100 of them managing them. Because, yeah, I don't want to go from room to room. It is important to me. I don't want to go from room to room configuring 100. If there's a firmware update, I don't want to do 100 room to room firmware updates. If, if the, you know, we decide we want to turn off the auto framing and we want to use manual framing, I don't want to turn it off. You know, so we definitely need those, those powerful management apps. And, but from certification, if I was, I'm trying to think of what I would want from certification if I was Microsoft Teams or Zoom. I understand basic quality certification. I would understand they want to get one of these in their lab and make a bunch of calls and make sure it looks good and sounds good because Bose isn't getting judged by this alone. If you're making Zoom calls, people are judging Zoom. People don't know what's the camera, what's the device, and what's the call. So if I'm a customer yeah. and I signed up, for a, uh, signed up with Zoom for 100 Zoom rooms and I get this device and it's bad, I'm going to call Zoom and say, I'm not happy with Zoom. I'm not happy with my Zoom meetings. They look terrible. They're going to say, but it's the device's fault. I, I don't, all I know is I'm paying for Zoom and I'm having bad Zoom meetings. I'm mad at Zoom. So if Zoom is going to certify it, they're going to make sure it's good quality. Now, that I'm happy with, but that doesn't require a big manual of things. You know, that's, that's a simple test. I, I, I really wish your, I'm, um, I'm going to have to, have to learn more about TV what's in the home Netflix certified, David? No. <laughs> There we go. Well, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one, isn't it? I, maybe there'll come a time when you assume that a device will be fit for purpose and, 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 and make that separation between the service and the hardware. I don't know. 
But yeah, that's one of the things I'm going to be asking at Enterprise Connect when I go on those stands. You know, what does this actually mean for me as an IT person? You know, wh why should I be looking for that certification sticker? Yeah. And and I do think it's a real thing. Just having from talk to the, the, the vendors have gone through the process and having talked to, to, to Zoom and Microsoft about how important it is to them. You know, I may not understand all the hoops that are there, but those hoops are real and it ain't just marketing. It's, it's um, you know, it's a lot. And, it, and I really do think it's, it's for the, the customer's benefit at the end. I don't think it's just, you know, Zoom covering themselves so they don't look bad, have a bad experience. I, I, th I really think maybe it's a little Pollyanna, everyone's a good person thing, but I really think there's some good people behind this that are like, no, we got to make sure that you know, it's a big deal setting up video. We're, we're a video world now. We got to make sure people have a good experience and certification is just the way to do it. Yeah, I, I just think that with so many people, you know, lots, lots of people use both headphones, um, all sorts of AirPods, Pixel Buds, what, whatever you want to do. And, and if, you're, if those are very personal to you, you enjoy using them, you know, you may have even <laughs> had them as a gift, you know, or, or what have you from a loved one. You want to use what's comfortable for you when you're working from home. And maybe that doesn't need such stringent certification. Uh, I always say that because um, uh, people, you know, people ask for recommendations, what kind of webcam? And I go through the different kinds of webcam and, you know, uh, different kinds of, you know, lighting and everything. And whenever they get to the audio and they say, you know, do you recommend over the year, in the year, da, 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 da. I say, it's clothing. You're wearing it. It's whatever you're comfortable with. I'm more comfortable now with in the year. I used to be more comfortable with over the year. There's sometimes there's behind the head things. It, it's literally, it's, it's whatever you're comfortable with. And I am not worried about, I am not worried about certification on, on my headsets at home. It sounds good. And I don't think we should. If they start doing certification for home gear, I'll, I'll pay attention to it. But um, and I think they, they do for some of the headsets already. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with, I think the main thing, this is about meeting rooms. Um, yeah. Should we get into the Microsoft button? I recently had uh, Ilya from um, Microsoft uh, as a guest um, and did an interview with him. And we did do the topic of certification. And when the topic of the Microsoft button came up, he kind of cringed a little because he's been attacked on that thing. And I, I have, um, and I, you know, I was happy to have him on. I don't want to give him a hard time. <laughs> he's, a, he's a really nice guy. Um, but I do see why Microsoft would want a Microsoft button. And I do see why a lot of analysts would think negatively of that because it does affect competition because if Bose is to be as mean as possible, if they're bullied, I don't think there's any bullies, but if they're bullied into putting a Microsoft button on it, then how are they going to sell this to Zoom rooms? How are they going to sell this for Zoom rooms? It says Microsoft on it. There's a little button on it that says Microsoft Teams. So it definitely well, you know, is a just... competition thing. Yeah. And, and because what you're doing there is a ten, you're, you're, almost creating an artificial switching cost, aren't you? So if you can only use certified devices with certified UCAS or conferencing services, then you've, you're, you're creating a artificial, you know, barrier to, to, to sort of switching out the service. So it's maybe turning it into I, a I Teams device when it really should yes. be a, a, a whatever you use. Any device. any device and any device. Yeah. I mean, and it does help the functionality. It is a good thing. And, and, and there's a funny story when they, when they, um, when the Microsoft Teams button first came out, it was before the pandemic, a year or two before the pandemic. Um, I was at a vendor booth. I don't remember which booth it is. Um, I don't, and I don't want to call out any vendors, but it was, you know, it was one of these, one of these uh, camera headphone manufacturers. And there was a very nice, very young uh, gentleman who was demoing it. He was very excited to be there. And he had all of his analysts there and he's going through all. And, and he, when he got to the new speakerphone that had the Microsoft Teams button, he was so excited that the speaker had the Microsoft Teams button because they had we're partnering with Microsoft Teams. And look, it's right on there. It's a Microsoft Teams button. He was going on and on and on. And finally, I asked him. I said, "Um, what happens when you press the Microsoft Teams button? What does it do?" And his face went pale, and he went, "Uh, uh, it does whatever Microsoft wants it to do," <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. I asked yeah. Ilya about that, and Ilya laughed, and he said, "The kid was right." That's exactly what, when we do the Microsoft certification, we say you have to put the button on there. What the button does, it sends a signal to Microsoft saying, button's been pressed. What do you want me to do? <laughs> so the, right. the, I thought the kid was, was, didn't know what he's talking about. He was actually right. The button does whatever. My, and yeah. I could see where it would be, where it'd be effective, but I could also see where other vendors and independent analysts would say, that's not, you know, you know, that's not good. That's not good poker. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, but you know what, David, the, the other thing that springs to mind is now I know that Cisco's devices also work with Microsoft Teams rooms. So you can have a web, you can have a Cisco hardware device that works with Cisco um, WebEx calling by Cisco or, or, or WebEx by Cisco and also with Microsoft Teams. Now, I'm not sure whether or not the Cisco devices have a specific Teams button on, but, you know, we're, we're getting to this environment now where even vendors are sort of recognizing people that you know that provide hardware and software solutions are recognizing that in order to grow their total addressable market they need to appeal not only to their solution that they provide but also to their competition yes um so we're in That's an interesting time where yeah there's a big change going on in the industry and i'm pretty sure we're going to see a lot more of this we're seeing that across all sorts of devices so maybe well, I, this reliance on a specific hardware button will diminish. I think it might already know. be gone now that I think about it because this is team certified, I believe, and there's no Microsoft uh -huh. Teams button on it. Um, well, unless it's the unless it unless it's unless they put one. a Teams button underneath the privacy shutter. So uh, and, <laughs> and no also I mean it. I don't know. It, it's interesting. I know the Cisco device can make Teams calls, but it's not Teams certified. That'd be weird if it. it if I Cisco, believe it is. It yes, is. it is. I'm, well, there's definitely Microsoft not a Teams, Teams button room. on the Cisco device. There's no way they no, put it. So it, it, okay, so that must be runs, that must uh, be gone. It, it, I'm I'm pretty convinced that it runs Microsoft Teams room on Android on on the Cisco devices, and there's a number of them. So, uh, yeah, I I think those those little Teams buttons are, are far and few between now. I think we're so, I think uh, we've, we've yeah. grown past them. Now, a question yeah. I always, I always get confused on this: the Cisco device. If I'm making a Cisco WebEx call on it. And then you come in the room, you want to use it for a Microsoft Teams call. Do you got to reboot it? Because I know some, I some devices that do both, no. you have to reboot. And I think this one you don't, which is a big deal. Yeah, I don't think you do because I, 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 it's my understanding. And uh, maybe I'll, I'll, we'll share a link uh, later on after, after the end of this live stream. But my understanding is that Cisco's calendaring software recognizes that it's a Teams call or a, a WebEx call or whatever call and allows you to leverage that um capability I, I need to double check on it um but i think you're right there's certainly calendaring integration i don't believe there's any need to reboot at all that's um, a big deal because i mean you know first of all having devices that only do microsoft teams or only do zoom that's that's a non-starter for people there are no microsoft teams shops or you know it used to be we had a cisco shop we use cisco for everything everyone's using teams and zoom I shouldn't say everyone, but a lot of companies are using, no, I want everyone, I'm going to say it, everyone is using Z Teams and Zoom, because even if you're a completely Teams shop and you're only using Teams, someone's going to send you a Zoom, some external's going to send you a Zoom in invite. You can't avoid it. You're going to do Zoom meetings. So there is no, there is no pure team shop. There is no pure Zoom shop. So I'm not buying a device that only does Teams. So we need these mixed devices and having to reboot it it's not quite as bad as having two, you know, at least I have two cameras sitting next to each other, but it's a big, it's a big, I keep saying hoops to jump through, but it's a hoop to jump through, you know, oh, what kind of meeting will we make? Do we need to reboot the device? That's, that doesn't foster collaboration and communication amongst your team. So, so no. Cisco deserves as much credit as we can give them. Yeah. And I wouldn't be at all surprised, you know, thinking about keynotes, if, if I was, doing a Cisco keynote, I'm pretty sure I'd want to have one of these, you know, uh, on, on, on the stage being demoed. I'm, I'm pretty sure they'll have this in their exhibitor hall. Oh yeah, in for sure. Booth. Yeah. All right. So anything else to, to, to say in this episode? I think, um, we've given our, um, opinion on, on, uh, on certification. I think we both have a little bit more to learn. I'm going to be asking some questions of the, of the vendors because, you know, they keep talking about how they have so much that they have to do. Well, I want to know. I want. To, I don't know what all that stuff is. I mean, it, so, it sounds like a lot Definitely. of software stuff, uh, and I just yeah, I just don't know what it is. So, um, but well, I'm encouraged that things are getting better. You know, we're we're seeing interoperability. We're seeing you know less of a sort of artificial switching cost barrier preventing IT departments from using multiple systems because you might need to. You know, you might have a webinar solution, perhaps Zoom. You might have Microsoft Teams for something else. You might have Cisco for something else. And we're seeing in our, you know, the, the, the surveys that we carry out between three to five different types of UCAS services in, in large organizations. No one's really consolidated on one yet. So, you know, multiple use cases. Why would you want multiple pieces of hardware? So 
it's looking good. And isn't it we're, interesting we're that, it, that it's Cisco that is leading with this? Because you would think it would be one of the independents. You think it would be Poly or, or, or Logitech or, or, you know, one of the camera companies that don't have a, a, a software, you know, don't have a, a dog in the fight. And, and Cisco, they well, want everyone using WebEx and they're making it easier for their customers to use uh, Teams. Um, I think yeah. it's the right move, but I, I'm just surprised that they're the first ones to do it. Yeah, well, there, there are poly and, uh, and Logitech solutions that will support this as well. I, I, we're, we're moving as an industry towards this multi-service functional hardware device. So uh, fantastic. It, it yeah. will be as simple as a USB connection for personal devices, thank goodness. So um, we, we all need that. We need that flexibility. And we're slowly moving towards the dream. We're, we're far, far away of calling a person like we do on the phone instead of calling a system. No, that's that's Absolutely. where we need to get where I mean, if I call you, I don't even know your number, but I, I can look up Tim and hit Tim and, and you answer the phone. And with video, I need to know, you know, should I send you a Zoom link or a Teams link? Are you in a certified room? Do we need to, you know, oh, oh you're, you're only on WebEx. I got to send you. I want to get past that, but we're, we're moving in the right direction. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks again, Tim, for being here. This was, as always, this was awesome. And um, I think our next uh, episode is going to be canceled because we'll be flying back from, from uh, Enterprise Connect. We do. And in, yeah, indeed. And hopefully we'll have a, a roundup for everyone. Maybe yes. that'll be the, our next one. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have a great episode after Enterprise Connect. We'll have a lot of, a lot of pictures and videos up here. All right. Have a great weekend. And uh, thanks everyone for watching. And we'll see you next time.